preserved bodies found in countries around the world can be divided into three classifications. The deliberately preserved, the accidentally preserved, and the incorruptibles. Specimens of the accidentally or naturally preserved were found even before Egyptian pharaoh times when the art of embalming originated producing for the first time the deliberately treated mummies that have survived for as many as 3,000 years. The incorruptibles however have existed only since early christian days their preservations since that time have challenged the opinions of skeptics and contradicted and defied the laws of nature all to the dismay of many examining physicians and the admiration of succeeding generations the more carefully we consider the preservation of the incorruptibles the more baffling does the subject become for their conservation seems to be dependent neither on the manner of burial nor on the temperature or place of interment nor were they adversely affected by extended delays between the time of death and the burials, by moisture in the tombs, by rough handling, by frequent transferences, by covering with quick lime, or by their proximity to decaying corpses. The greater majority were never embalmed or treated in any manner, yet most were found lifelike, flexible, and sweetly scented many years after death. In sharp contrast to the specimens of the other two classifications above, who, without exception, were found stiff, discolored, and skeletal. The mystery of their preservations is further compounded by the observance of blood and clear oils, which have proceeded from a number of these holy relics, a phenomenon that, again, needless to say, was never recorded with regard to the deliberately or accidentally preserved. In order for the listener to appreciate fully the truly phenomenal, highly mysterious, and in most cases, absolutely miraculous aspects of the incorruptibles, it is of the utmost importance that we examine, however briefly, the methods employed in the deliberate preservation of human bodies from ancient times to our modern day, and the conditions favoring the accidental or natural preservation of human remains. Final consideration will be given to the incorruptibles with an analysis of their attending prodigies. Let's consider first the artificial preservation of human bodies. The artificial preservation of human bodies has been of interest to civilization since about the year 3000 BC. 
believed to have evolved from the procedures used to preserve food by drying and salting. The elaborate methods employed to preserve bodies were first applied to satisfy ancient religious beliefs. The Egyptian creators of the art believed that the preservation of the body was essential for maintaining the identity of the deceased on his prolonged journey to his ultimate existence in the other world. In order to maintain this necessary housing of the spirit, they developed a number of embalming methods, some of which were not as successful as the natural preservations that were achieved by placing the remains in hot, dry sand. There were basically three embalming techniques. The most elaborate and likewise the most expensive method performed for the wealthier classes involved the removal of the brain through the nasal passages in the extraction of the internal organs. Except for the heart and kidneys through standardized incisions the cranial cavity was filled with hot resin and the, abnorm the abdominal cavity after being cleansed with palm wine and aromatics was filled with any one of a number of materials including spices, resin, or resin soaked sawdust. The body was then placed in natron, a sodium carbonate found in the Libyan desert. After complete desiccation, dehydration or drying, which took as many as 70 days to achieve, the body was cleansed with various spices and oils. Then followed the elaborate wrapping of each digit each limb in the entire body with as many as 450 yards of cotton or linen into which were tucked bracelets, necklaces, rings, charms, and jeweled amulets which were intended for the use of the spirit during its hazardous journey. After the linen was sealed with resin or gum, the body was returned to the relatives for storage in mummy cases familiar to us in the case of the Egyptians. One of the cheaper processes involved injection of cedar oil into the abdomen by the use of syringes in the desiccation of the body in natron. The oil in intestines were then withdrawn. In the simplest and cheapest method, the intestines were cleared out and after 70 days in natron, the procedure was completed. In these simpler methods, no wrapping with linen was undertaken. Many Egyptian mummies have survived to modern times in remarkable states of preservation as we know. But many were reduced to dust during scientific examinations or putrefied rapidly when the bandaging was removed. The Incas of South America were also very successful at mummifying human remains with the procedures used are not known for certain.
It is thought, however, that the bodies were desiccated before burial, probably because of the hot, dry climate of the region. In Tibet, mummification was used upon bodies of the highest lamas. After evisceration or disembowelment, the abdominal cavity was packed with lacquer, saturated padding, and the body wrapped in lacquered silk. It was thoroughly dried by placing it in a lotus position in a salt-filled room into which, for several days, heated air was forced after cooling and unwrapping. It was covered with gold leaf by experienced craftsmen and then conveyed to the Hall of Incarnations where it was seated on a throne the solemn company of other gilded lamas of past ages. Very unusual substances have been used in man's efforts to conserve mortal flesh. In Babylon, preservations are said to have been affected by the immersion of bodies in honey. The remains of Alexander the Great are reputed to have been preserved in this manner. The body of Sir Gerard de Braybroke, who died in 1422, was discovered in the Church of Danbury in 1779, where examining doctors noted with amazement that it was lying in an aromatic fluid that tasted like mushroom ketchup spiced with Spanish olives. according to the adventurous soul who partook of it. In 1723, the well-preserved body of a naval commander was found steeped in rum. It's befitted one of his calling. Where modern methods were devised when it became necessary to preserve bodies and various organs for anatomical desiccation and storage in medical museums. Several original methods were used that necessitated, necessitated the use of saltpeter, pitch, resin, tar, salt, camphor, or cinnamon. But alcohol proved to be the most popular, except that it caused induced shrinkage and loss of color. In the 19th century, the use of formaldehyde came into vogue, and anatomical specimens were treated with this, the color being restored by brief immersion in spirits and storage in a 50% solution of glycerin. Modern embalming methods, which are more detailed and scientifically formulated than one would ordinarily suppose entail basically the drainage of the blood vessels and the injection under pressure of a solution of formaldehyde, glycerin, and borax. The principal constituents of embalming fluids. These ingredients and many others may be used in various proportions and quantities as the embalmer deems proper and necessary. Depending upon the strength of the arterially injected fluid and the weight of the subject, as many as 10 to 14 pints of a strong solution may be used in an average adult body. If a weaker solution is employed, embalmers generally compensate for this by injecting a larger volume of fluid, which might measure from 24 to 32 pints, reckoned entirely upon the subject's weight. The complete dissolution of some bodies may require several years, depending upon the strength of the embalming fluid used. 
But even with these specialized chemicals, the majority of tombs are ready for reuse after only one year's occupancy. Cemeter cemetery workers around the world could undoubtedly relate instances in which mummified remains have been discovered. Those sextants with whom the author spoke concerning this subject reported that the finding of such specimens is quite rare. One sextant of a large cemetery who had supervised the opening of vaults both above and below the ground for over 28 years related that only one such preservation was found during that time in that it was as dry and hard as stone. Other sextants with as many as 15 years experience each had never seen such a preservation but had heard that at least one of these rigid conservations had been found previously in their cemeteries. The mummified condition of these remains is believed by them to have been affected by strong embalming fluids which halted dissolution until the desiccation of the tissues was completed under prolonged drying conditions. Undoubtedly, the most modern method devised to preserve human bodies might well be said to belong to the realm of science fiction. This is the technique fostered by the Life Extension Society, or cryogenics, in which the bodies of persons dying of incurable ailments are frozen in a state of suspended animation in thermostatically controlled cylinders to be thawed and reanimated in future ages when science has developed a cure for their particular maladies. Tests involving the freezing and reanimation of animals have failed miserably, and the revival of those persons already frozen is hoped for with an unfounded optimism. The followers of this cult are nevertheless looking to the future in investing considerable sums of money in it. Now that we have examined the methods and materials used during various ages in the deliberate preservation of human bodies, we will consider the conditions and elements favoring the accidental or natural preservation of human remains. This analysis is very important since the bodies of the incorruptibles have been erroneously classified by many as natural mummies. The origins and differences